I just wanted to talk a little bit about call centers. I think they're bullshit. If you're a giant publicly traded telecommunications omnicore and you can't set up a contact center of people who wear your badge, participate in your corporate health plan and your company parties and have the status of an employee of your company, I think that's bullshit. There's no reason why you can't do that. And the reason why you wouldn't is to save a few bucks. So, you know, you can find, I'm not going to say suckers, but desperate people in other places, desperate people and suckers, to work for minimum wage or slightly more in some outport boondock place. Maybe you'll even get provincial funding to keep butts in seats. You'll, you know, help um, ensure a churn of what, I'm sorry to actual gypsies, but what I heard is call center gypsies. If you are taking calls all day for one company, which ideally you should be, I mean, like you shouldn't be like, you know, hi, this is Davis Health Insurance. You know, and then the next minute you're like, um, hi, welcome to Cable Company. But like, why? You're not going to be, I, 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 could, I could see some kind of argument where, like, it might be more interesting if you mix it up. But no, no, I, 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 I that, that's, that, that's not enough. No, like, you can, you can mix up stuff that's like actually related to the company that you're working for. You could, well, one thing I would like to see is have, have workers consulted much more on the user interfaces that they use uh, because the ones I've seen really suck. Like, I think I could make a better interface, really. If you're a small company, you can, hire people to answer the phones for you very easily. If you're a growing company, okay, yeah, you're you're a growing company and you suddenly need, you know, 5,000 more people answering the phones. I can see how you would want to build that capacity without actually having to build that capacity. Yeah, it's much easier to give that work to another organization. But once you do that, it's an ethically problematic situation because then there, there's no accountability. Well, there's accountability of the agent, I suppose, but there's no accountability of the client. And the contracting organization just acts like a middleman and they're like, you know, well, we can't do anything about this. It's in our contract with the client. It's just what the client wants. But, you know, you didn't you didn't get to negotiate with the client. Like if you were an actual employee of that company, then, you know, you would you would have some kind of access. You would be able to speak to you know, managers and mucky mucks and whoever's there, and maybe they would, you know, laugh at you, but at least, at least you had that access. You know, maybe they'd show you the door, but at least, at least you could say something. But when you're at, when you're in working for one of these middle middleman organizations, a they're basically ta they're you know they're taking a cut of what it costs to keep you there and that goes on and on and on that doesn't you know you don't and you don't graduate from being part of this part of this middle organization into actual positions with the actual company there's no upward mobility it's more like sideways mobility between different clients there is some upward mobility within the call center system it's like graduating from an ordinary slave to a supervisor of slaves.
or even worse, you get to rat out on other slaves. They call that quality. You might actually get paid less in quality than actually being the front-end rep. I, I, I think I would actually rather be the front-end rep. You're not there to ruin people's day. You're not there to be the police. And you would also have the opportunity to, like, hear from people who wanted to talk to you. And you may also get, you know, I don't know, sales commissions or something. You could make more money being a rep than being in quality. Or you become a supervisor. And there are some good supervisors. I had a good supervisor once and you know she was young and idealistic and i don't know she's probably grumpy now <laughs> I, don't, I don't know <laughs> it's probably <laughs> oh there was this one place i there was this one place where like it heaven help you if you were working and it wasn't your regular supervisor because then if somebody if a customer wanted to, like, give you extra congratulations, extra kudos for, you know, having done such a bang-up job, like, hey, could I speak to your supervisor? Well, it's the supervisor's job to write it up and give, give you the official recognition. If you're doing extra hours and you're not on their team, they're like, fuck you. They, <laughs> like, you know, I, I, was, I was like, waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks for from for a kudos right up from this one deadbeat and i <laughs> think he'd ever i don't think he'd ever get to it i was like i was always like you know naive and hopeful and like what do you get you know when is he going to write up my kudos so i can put it on my cubicle wall and once in a while the client would come in and it would be like a it, it would be like a visit from santa claus and they'd oh my gosh they're here they're here and they and you know they would they would change the dress code that day so it would be like well you know we're usually ca we're usually casual but today we're business casual so you got to come in your nice slacks and no no sneakers today you know we're we're gonna be something we're not because god is here god is watching you it's so so ugly it's so Today, this very day that I'm recording this, I was offered a technical support job where I could work from home. That well, sounds, sounds great, right? Except the thing is, is that you bring all of the evils of the call center into the home. It's not like you, you know, just have to worry about getting, you know, getting the job done. You have to send them photographs to prove that you have a noise-free and distraction-free work area and your computer can't be running the latest version of Windows and your Internet Explorer can't be too recent because their software sucks. They have this job for tech-savvy people, yet they punish them for being up to date. So... I was willing to play around with the play along with this. I thought, okay, I'll I'll fire up a Windows 7 virtual machine, and I only need to do a, I only need to have it for a few weeks because they're going to send a, a kit with they're going to send a computer with everything but the monitor uh, that they want me to use in production, like I, like ta taking calls on regular shifts. So I, you know, I, I can I can do this, but they like they want you to demonstrate that it's a genuine licensed copy of Windows Seven. Like, what if I don't have a genuine licensed copy of Windows Seven? That that could cost hundreds of dollars. If you're you know uh, if you bought your computer recently and you upgraded it to Windows eight point one, what the hell? Am, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, do you want me to reformat my machine, like roll it or like roll it back to Windows 8 so I can get a minimum wage job? And you're going to you're going to send me a thing to do your job on anyway. So why does why don't you just up? Why don't you just fix your software before, you know, and don't make it my problem. It's your problem. If your software 
does not work with the latest Internet Explorer and the latest Windows, I got news for you. That's your problem. It's not mine. It's yours. I've never programmed for the Windows API. I hear it's hard. But if you followed the rules, if you kept it to the actual way you're supposed to do it, and didn't rely on pludges and implementation details, a program that was written for 32-bit Windows, like that would run under Windows 95, or even maybe Win32S, but let, let, let's say Windows 95, or, or Windows NT4, you know, like just, just, just ran for plain 32-bit Windows, that program, if it were written correctly, would still work, ideally. You know, like, I, maybe Microsoft makes some mistakes and, and breaks things that used to work, but I'd say it's just as often, if not more often, going the other way. People are taking advantage of the implementation instead of instead of using what they're supposed to use. I got, like I don't know anything about this. This is just like if you like if you disagree with this, let, let me know because like I I'm I'm kind of, I'm talking out of my ass a bit. But the perception I get is like they're doing they're instead of like writing their car driving program like the car's the operating system instead of writing their car driving program to work the steering wheel and the gas and the brakes and the gear shift they're programming right into the wheels the way they're turned right into the maybe right into the steering column or into the wheels and right into the engine rpm because you know it's more expedient maybe it's faster and it get you know it, it's just like hey you know why not why not just do that you know like like don't don't go through the actual process of like a bank transaction and like recording everything properly just here's the cash and set and increase my balance by that amount and that's all you have to do just just balance plus 200 and it, you know off we go it doesn't have to you know like, i'm i'm oversimplifying the programming language itself c that windows is written in does not have the concept of it, of information hiding. I don't like I don't know anything about this, so maybe inside the system there's ways that they obfuscate and and hide people and keep like ways built into Windows that keep people from doing things they shouldn't. But it's not a language feature. They would have had to have done those things themselves. Linus, Linus, Tor Torvalds tried compiling the Linux kernel in a C++ compiler, and I think he gave up on it in short order. Microsoft themselves wrote an experimental operating system in managed code. So this means you get all the memory management information hiding and all the fancy features of managed code. Well, C plus, I mean, C++ isn't managed code, but has information hiding. Anyway, Microsoft called it Singularity. As far as I know, it's not exactly a speed demon. The closer you write to the hardware, the faster it is. The unfortunate part is, the closer you write to the hardware, the more quickly your program is going to become obsolete, because somebody's going to come up with new hardware and, well, you're screwed. You have to start over. Anyway, this very day, I was offered that job, and you have to actually equip your own home office. You need to have an analog telephone line and have a base phone and then have a headset. So you'll end up you know, not, not a cordless phone with a headset, because the battery, well, the battery will run out before your shift is over. You basically have to make a little call center in your house. So I went onto this website, 
and I it was like two hundred and eighty dollars or something for a kit that had a uh, a very nice uh, two earpiece headset with a noise noise canceling in and out like noise canceling on the inside and noise canceling on the outside and there was a little box that was an amplifier and it had separate in and out volume controls and a mute button for going out that's so you can bitch and complain and scream you get that and you get the phone and you get the headset and after i bought it and my head was still all twisted around in how I'm like rearranging my life to do this job. I just realized my freedom's not worth it. My sanity, it's not worth it. Like I'd have to work, I'd be working for, I don't know, six months, a year before I can save enough money to do something else. I'd rather just try to do something right now with almost no money than just be bedraggled with them. And also, I really, I really did not like their authoritarianism, their way to get rights that they neither need nor deserve. One of the forms that I had to agree to, they, oh, this, this is good. They set up a 90-minute meeting, and it was called onboarding oh isn't that is that it's like, it's like waterboarding you've been offered the job but now you have to go through this two week onboarding process or otherwise the job offer may the employment offer may be rescinded <laughs> like you know instead of just like well you know we think you're pretty good yeah well okay we're going to we're going to send you this we're going to send you our kit, and we're also going to, in that kit will be a box to send it back, and you have to send it back if we ask you to, or otherwise we're going to, we're going to, we're going to come to your house, and we're going to be mad, and that kit is ours, and we only, you know, don't, don't run any other programs or any other operating systems on it, we're going to, like, secure boot that thing, we're going to tie that thing up tighter than Fort Knox, and we want you to have that run directly uh, by an ethernet cord into your modem slash router. Okay. Okay. I I'm fine. I'm like, I I'm fine with that. But this, like this whole thing about like how you have to like go to all this trouble and expense just to get minimum wage or 50 cents more than minimum wage and no time off for two months, three months. And absolutely, absolutely no time off during the training because that training is really important. Because if you if you miss a second of that training, you, like, oh man, uh, unless unless their training is like something unbelievable and something totally different from what I've experienced so far in call centers, I'd say you could probably miss two or three days and you would probably be all right. Because anybody, you know, if you have two and a half or three brain cells to rub together. It's not that hard to work ahead. Uh, it's, it's embarrassingly easy to work ahead, really. And it's not, uh, it's not that hard to catch up later. It's just funny, you know, for a job that's tech support that you want tech-savvy people to do, that you torture them with, this is good, 90 minutes on how to fill out your forms. If your forms are so bad that you need to make people sit through a 90-minute PowerPoint on how to fill out your forms, your forms are fucked up. Your forms suck. You gotta fix that. I and the worst part was I filled out I filled out like what most of the presentation was about it was about, about background check. I filled out the whole background check and like and got and got it in the can and got it like off to the races and then had to sit through 40 minutes about the background check and answer quiz questions about it like and she would like say blah 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 
and they'd do a quiz, and we'd all be like, yes, blah, 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 blah. And then she would say, just as a reminder, blah, 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 blah. Fuck you! What do you think we are? Three? Like, this is, like... Anyway, so I was... I was... I was livid. I'm like, why are you, why are you treating us like imbeciles? Like, I don't, I don't want to work for you. You're going to treat us like this? So I'm enduring this lecture on how to fill out a form. And then the parts that are really important, she doesn't give you any time to do. Like, she fired up the, like, the, um, the legal stuff. And it said in the presentation that you would have 15 minutes to do it. And then she says, well, you know, we don't have all that much time, so we'll give you 10, 10 minutes. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do, you know. So she's, so you can already tell she's kind of being a little bit unfair because she's giving, she's giving us 10 minutes where presumably people in the past had 15 or maybe even more. And on those legal forms, I, like, I'm trying to look and see, okay, is there, like, a non-compete agreement in this? Like, am I, would I be, like, screwed out of working into anything IT-related or into anything related to the fields that I'm doing tech support in? Like, how, how draconian is this? So I'm doing, like, Control-F to, like, search for compete and non-dash, and I didn't, I didn't find anything egregious. But I did find a howler at the at the bottom of one of them, and it said, "I agree. I've been encouraged to seek legal counsel, and have been in, and have had the opportunity to do so. Oh, I've had the opportunity to seek legal counsel for your minimum wage plus fifty cent job." that you just offered me an hour ago that I'm in on the onboarding process for and that you're hurrying along and say we need to finish you know you need to finish this and check off these forms in 10 minutes and you need to have all this all of your onboarding ready uh 7 days ahead of your ahead of your start date or else you know your employment offer may be rescinded fuck you really fuck you you have what the fuck are you thinking? Nobody, who the fuck got legal counsel to before they worked a minimum wage job? That's fucking take it or leave it. You're a fucking shithead. If you're a lawyer and you put, you wrote that in, if you're working in a company, fuck you. Fuck you. I can't, I can't I can't say this enough. You're you're hold, you're holding a gun to somebody's head and saying they had an oper- like for d- desperate people who can like can't probably can't get any other job and you're t- and you're saying you're saying they had a meaningful opportunity to seek legal counsel? Where the fuck are they going to get legal counsel? You know, because they and they have you know, they have every right to say, well, you know, my hourly fee is, you know. So pony up you know, and I don't have any money so it would just be on the plastic and it would just increase this this ridiculous infrastructure investment you have to make to turn your home into a call center before you take this job all the, like it should just be online like it should it should like you know I should just be able to get like a USB headset and have a reasonable keyboard and display and do the, and an internet connection and do this job like to the fact that you made it require windows is is unethical you don't have to pay the windows tax you don't have to use windows there are alternatives that you don't have to pay for and have there are trade-offs. Um, video editing is up and coming uh, on on an alternative platform like Linux, and you don't have to run Mac either. And this company doesn't support Macintosh either. Okay, but they also don't support running Windows on a Mac. How the how in the bloody blue blazes 
does it make a difference? Like if I'm if I have a Mac and I'm running Windows natively, I've basically turned it into a PC that's built by Apple. I guess I take the uh, attitude that Macs are PCs, just not all PCs are Macs. Still, you're you're losing the Macness of your Mac if you're not also running the Macintosh operating system. If you're you know, you know like because the hard the hardware is compatible, you can run Windows on it. And well, once you've ran once you've got Windows on it, what's the big difference? So I think I've established, or at least in my own mind, I've established that a lot of the people who work for these call centers are really, you know, I they're, they're kind of kind of dumb. I, like I I know that's a that's a dirty word, you know. Um, like I mean, it's not like the the s word or the i word. No, it, it means to be not able to speak, and there are people with physiological conditions that prevent them from speaking, or they were able to speak and can no longer speak. Um, you know, maybe they had throat cancer or something, and, and maybe the, the the device that they use to speak doesn't you know doesn't work. Um, maybe that's an inappropriate word, but you you know what I mean. I, I, I mean, these are low information people, you know, through through no fault of their own. But let me give you an example. They kept like barking up how it was Mountain Standard Time, but this is May. Uh, so they're and they are in a state that has daylight savings that use that switches to daylight savings time. So they are they are on mountain daylight time and so and so most of north america is on daylight time but they're all like they're all like you know pst mst cst um est and then for atlantic they say atl and uh, maybe they changed that to atl after i you know maybe it used to say ast because I, I i wrote to them and i'm like you know you you shouldn't be saying standard time because you know we're on daylight time now you you should just say you know if you don't want to say just say it's mountain time and we'll you know we'll figure it out but you're you're kind of being you're being what they call hyper correct you're being you're trying to be so correct and so precise that you end up making a mistake because you don't know enough to be that precise. Yeah, so just just say Madden time. If you don't know what it means, don't try to say it. You know, I sent them an email about this and they they replied, Yes it is Madden time. And you know they didn't they didn't acknowledge the they didn't acknowledge the point I was trying to make. Anyway, Raymond Chen writes an interesting uh, blog post about this and how you know your people are just trying to trying to say "st" during daylight time just to just to sound sound all official and smart and formal. Anyway. Well, I guess we should have sympathy, you know. They just they just want love and consideration. Well, why don't we try a little harder not to be pompous asses? Like is it is it really a necessary part of the human condition that we have to be stuck up formal? Anyway, another a question for another time, I guess. And I'll give you another example. At another place where I did actually work, it was in cell. It was doing cell phone customer service. And at the time, I knew of two major cellular technologies. There was CDMA, Code Division Multiple Access, and then there was GSM global system for mobile communications and GSM was more worldwide popular but CDMA was basically entrenched of 
in nor most of North America, and the, G the GSMs were kind of the up-and-comers. Like in Canada, TELUS and what is now Bell were pretty much CDMA, and Rogers was pretty much GSM. Now, it's all gotten changed and more complicated, and you can take the same iPhone on all the different carriers, I guess. I don't, I don't know, or you can get a special. So, like, so I, I, don't, I don't know the lay of the land right now in terms of cell phone technology. Um, but I asked which one of these two major technologies, CDMA or GSM, this particular cell company was. So I, I'm, I'm at, so I asked the trainer, I said, you know, so hey, is this CDMA or GSM? It's digital. Oh, okay, well, I, I know it's digital. Like I get, you know, I get digital services with my telephone over CD, over what's basically CDMA, but I guess I was kind of asking, you know, what's the basic flavor of this ice cream? You know, where, 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 do, we, where do we start from? And it's digital. Um, anyway, I, I found out later it was something called IDEN with a maybe a, a small I at the beginning. And it's this, um, it's this push to talk technology that's, uh, that's built on it. It's a very interesting stuff. The equivalent in Canada was something called Mike by TELUS. Because I, I kind of got wondering, like, why is the roaming area in Canada so poor for this U.S. for this particular kind of U.S. phone? And well, that's why it's this it's this third option. And the trainer did not know what it was. She just said, "Well, it's you know, it's 100% digital." Well, like you're just reading like the marketing shit at me. Like, <laughs> and another place I worked at when it came time to sign the agreements. We were all in the training room at the time, and it was on Prince Edward Island, so maybe there's some kind of provincial labor law where you have to, you have to pay somebody, a, give somebody a dollar at the time that they're signing the contract, like it's kind of like a, a handshake or something. He didn't, ha he didn't have the dollars with him, but that was kind of disappointing. Like it would have been like, what if I really liked that job? What if I, what if that job were like changed and defined my whole life? I would, I would like to have that dollar as a keepsake, uh, you know, from when I, you know, this is, this is the dollar that they gave me to signify my covenant with big call center ink. So it was basically just a meat space version of this online thing, except, well, I, I guess worse because uh, with this with this job, I felt I didn't feel any pressure to to hang on. Like I re I just realized, you know, this isn't gonna work. So I just wrote I just wrote a little message and say, look, I'm I'm not gonna I, I'm not going to accept this job. But uh, at that job, I felt under a lot, I felt under way more pressure. Like I, I wanted to quit after the first night I was on the phone and I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I, I tried so hard. I was, I was, I was, let me my finger up here. I was okay, sideways. I was up to the camera. Okay, okay, I was, I was like, that close i i and then i was like no me man me stick with it i'll stick with it i'll do this and oh my god i i shouldn't have i really i really sh like i needed i needed money to go to school in the fall but i should you know i i i, I maybe should have bite, bit the bullet and taken out a loan or worked part-time at but the, yeah, that's the thing is like I, I, you can't you can't get a loan unless you like they they expect you to have been working full time. I shouldn't even get into that. Yeah, the student student loans, fuck student loans. They they're they're fucking bullshit. They're they're worse than uh, in in Finland they they pay students a stipend while they're going to school. Like the school like not only is university free. But you get a you get help with your living expenses while you're there, and uh, uh, even even Andrew Coyne's proposal that uh, you know 
school just be, you know, the cost of university, since you are the beneficiary of university, just be taken out of your taxes later. Well, that, that makes perfect sense because, they you know, then, then the people who people who go to university and they they strike it, they strike it rich. You know, they they obviously they they can afford to pay taxes, you know, they can afford to pay these taxes. So, like, if I'm if I'm making if I'm making good money after I after as a result of my university education, sure. Yeah. Well, that that makes sense to me. He says, you know, it's not it's not the total amount of money you have. It's a cash flow problem. You you know you you don't have. I guess say you know realistically, you don't have ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars a year. Um, you know, or like I mean, maybe maybe five thousand dollars if you live at home and your parents take care of everything for you. And you're just paying tuition, so maybe maybe five or less in that case. You don't have that money when you need to spend it to get the education so that you can make more money. So a cash flow problem. Anyway, enough enough about that. So in this room, with all the people there, it was take it or leave it with everybody. Like you know, read it over quickly you know, sign on the dotted line, you know, like they're a salesman trying to close the deal. Here, we got you now. It's, um, that's kind of predatory, really. And it's stupid that we're facilitating this, that we give any, any payroll rebates or that anybody applies for a job with these people or that, you know, we're just... We're just encouraging, you know, not growing companies, but growing companies to, you know, increase their bottom line, and they don't give a, they don't give a crap about anything else, apparently, decrease their liability, and it does no lasting good for us because nobody wants to work in these jobs for any length of time and one thing that bugged me was i saw the pdf the, this bugged me about this company that i just turned down i saw the pdf about their benefits and the benefits kick in provided you've worked a minimum number of hours consistently um for i don't know three months six months um there's kind of i i think i think that's kind of bullshit i mean i i i think you should i think you should have your benefits on the first day um although i mean i'm, I'm saying that because i'm wearing the same pair of glasses i have since 2003 and i i mean i suppose i could seriously save up and get and get new glasses or even get google glass maybe you're always expecting around the bend you would get a job and and you would be working in that job long enough and you know then you could get you know you could get vision care but actually this job <laughs> this job didn't offer vision care but just the thing that bugged me was it specifically said it's the non corporate health plan so so there's two different health plans so the people who work in the big head office get one health plan and the peons on the phones get another this is bullshit man healthcare is a human right you why the hell would you have would you have that be like tiered within your organization you like and i would say this for universities too if universities have student health plans that aren't as good as the president of the university's health plan that's bullshit it should all be it should all be the same plan but i mean ideally we should probably get this out of the private sector this, this is like this should it should not be left up to the private sector you know who gets help with their teeth falling out and who gets you know drugs they need to not die and who you know gets um gets help with the with the the 
the scene shifts. Hey, that that that's pretty. I'm I'm not saying that government should pay for my new Google Glass, but you know, like just like there should be there should be enough to get to get a not shitty pair of glasses that won't make you miserable. I don't know if that's you know three hundred bucks every four years. I don't know. The concept of health benefits should be offensive it, like it, like it's something it's something you earned oh you you earned the right to have somebody look at your teeth good for you you earned the right to have glasses that don't suck good for you 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 earned the right to get to have Get pills for your condition so you don't die. Good for you. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. This is ridiculous that this is in the private sector. Why is this left up to the whim and the capriciousness of employers? Bullshit. This is just bullshit. Well, you know, my back is starting to hurt from sitting here. And not that this is an ergonomic chair or anything, but a job where you force somebody to sit in a you know stationary for you know eight hours with the you know a few okay you know breaks here and there but it's uh not particularly humane anyway so in the future, if anybody like is ever like watching this and like wants to know how to do a contact center from home model, it's not the worst idea in the world. Like if um I don't know, if you wanted to like do tech support for a Linux distribution or something, like if you if you popped out a Linux distribution and you didn't and you didn't have an office and you didn't have you didn't you didn't want to like invest in a bricks and mortar office to have to have people fine but but here's what you do um make them employers of your make them employees of your organization and if you have to like make some big open source software solution to have people do con you know do contact center work from home then 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 that's what you do maybe to have something that's like generalized generally applicable that can be adapted to local business rules would be would be very difficult and maybe and maybe not even worth doing. You gotta somehow make that connection. Hire some people to build the software for you, but you run it yourself. You you take the keys, you find the people that you want for your corporate culture, you recruit, you let those people be work work for you and be accountable to you and wear your badge and come to your parties and give them business cards yes yes give them business cards give them give them business cards with your company on it and and it'll say you know representative and give give them something to be proud of and if it's a call center you know have a have a voice audition by telephone or by webcam or by Skype. You know, test somebody's technical ability from something like whatever today's equivalent of ICQ is when you're in a chat and like you could actually see people type the letters out. Like if you wanted to test if somebody could code for you, you could just, um, or or type something, you could just like, give them the problem or give them the thing that you want them to type and, you know, they'll do it for you. You know, they can just do it for you right there. And you could be like, it would only take a second. Like you would be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's enough. And for the equipment, you know, send them all the equipment in a big box. If you hate this job and want to quit, call this number, put this stuff back in the box and we'll send the UPS guy or whatever to come to come get it. Yeah, I mean you're kind of you're kind of trusting people this way maybe. I mean maybe you want to maybe you want to screen for 
Yeah, you know, I, I suppose people who have been convicted of you know, credit card fraud before you um, give them access to people's credit card uh, information in the context of doing your business for you, to have people working there for your company that you look through all the screening and stuff you like, but they will they will work for your company and they will have some loyalty to you and they not just not just their next paycheck, which they are getting less of because you did not hire them yourself. My arguments against call centers aren't perfectly sound. Like I said, there's reasons why if you're growing rapidly, you might need to use them, but they're not much better than a necessary evil. And I don't think we should be going out of our way to give necessary evils the oxygen they need to thrive. I am all for starving them out, especially now how so much stuff is just self-serve and mechanized anyway and the fact that we need these great big honking exploitative infrastructures for the sake of money is letting the money tail wag the dog you know money should be at our service it shouldn't be our master anyway Thank you for watching. If you've watched all of this, I, I thank you. Uh, no. Wait, no, you know what? I'm not going to thank you for watching. If you like this, you're going to watch it. If you don't like it, you won't. You're watching it is not like some kind of like favor you're doing for me. Please watch. Please subscribe to my video. <laughs> Fuck that shit, man. Like, I, I, like yeah. Like, I'll, like, I'll... I'll put out in a like a you know a tweet or a blog post that I that I did something new, but I, I'm not gonna like you know go around the block you know begging people to watch. And the worst part is I'm like a low battery. The worst part is people putting like boxes. Subscribe now. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Get more videos. Subscribe. And I'm like. Why would I want to subscribe to this channel that keeps putting all of these annoying messages in my face about subscribing to it? You know, and also, I, I use YouTube pretty frequently. I know how the subscribe button works. You don't need to tell me to click subscribe. I, you know, if I like you, no, no, if, if I like what you're doing and get get something out of it, I will subscribe. If I don't, I won't. It's not a charity issue.